The next of our periodic functions we're going to take a look at is the cosine function. Now, the properties of the sine function and properties of the cosine function are going to be the same as far as uh, vertical stretch and horizontal stretch, but the way we build the cosine function is a little bit different. Again, going back to the basic concept that when we have a coordinate on the edge of the unit circle, that coordinate is equivalent to cosine theta sine theta. So what we're going to be looking at in this function as we build it is the x values of everything. So again, starting at a theta of 0 with our standard graph, our x value is 1. Then, as we move around at pi thirds, or sorry, pi 6, our x value is going to be radical 3 over 2. At pi thirds, it's going to be one half. And then at pi halves, we're looking at an x value of zero. Then moving to the other side, our x's will become a negative one half. A negative radical three over two. And a negative one. They will continue to remain negative as we move into quadrant 3, repeating the same values, slowly falling back to 0 at 3 pi halves. Then as we move we will into quadrant 4, we'll have positive x values of 1 half and radical 3 halves until we return back at 2 pi to an x value of 1. So we end up with a graph that has the same general properties as our sine wave except we start at our maximum. So this one our pattern is max, 0, min, 0, max. Basic function is y equals a times the cosine of b theta. A gives us our amplitude and our b helps control the period again with the value that our period is 2 pi divided by b. So using the same qualities, same things that we learned in the sine function lesson, we can quickly adapt into the cosine function. Let's take a look at how some of this will look like when we go to interpret graphs and look, uh, look at graphing them ourselves. So our first value, our first graph, we're going to find the critical values for it. This is a sine function, but critical values are still going to be the same. They're going to be zeros, minimum, and maximum. And as we're going through, we're looking at what the x values are, what the domain values are that give us these. So we have zeros on our standard sine wave at 0, pi, and 2 pi. Minimum will happen at 3 pi halves, and our maximum at 1 pi half, or just pi halves. Now if we were to impose the graph that we just did onto here, on the same interval from 0 to 2 pi, our zeros become pi halves and 3 pi halves. Our minimum is at pi and our maximums are at 0 and 2 pi. You can see the same values are being recycled just in different order because there's a little bit of a time discrepancy and we'll later call this a phase shift and learn how to manipulate our left and right movements. But what happens when we go to sketch a function? 
Well, first thing we need to do is find out what our amplitude is and what our period is. Our amplitude is their A value. This is a positive 2, so that means we're going to start at our high point. and return to it. If it had been a negative 2, we would have started down at our lower end point and gone up. Next, our period <coughs> is 2 pi divided by b. So that's going to be 2 pi divided by 1 third, which is simply 6 pi. So I'm going to change my scale here. I'm going to take this out from 0 to 6 pi, which means we have 3 pi in the middle. And every two lines becomes a pi. Now, we will have a maximum at 2 when uh, theta is 0 and we will return to that at the end of our period of 6 pi. We will have a minimum halfway in between them, so at 3 pi we're at negative 2. Now halfway between these minimums and maximums, so halfway between 0 pi and 3 pi, which is 1 half pi, we actually have a 0. And between 3 pi and 6 pi, which is 4 and a half pi, we'll have another 0. So our graph is going to look something like this showing one full cycle. So last lesson we were doing all of ours on the interval from 0 to 2 pi. This time showed one full cycle. Now one thing we can do with both sine and cosine functions that we did not do in the previous lesson is solve equations that involve them. And to do this, if you'll recall, we have sine and cosine functions, but we also have the arc sine and arc cosine. Now the difference in solving a periodic function as opposed to any other type of function we've learned this year is because of the nature of a periodic function that it always repeats, we have to give a limitation on our windows in order to know what group we want to solve it in. For instance, 3 cosine of 2 theta, or 2t, equals a negative 2. We want to solve this only on the interval from 0 to 2 pi. And the reason for that is that we want to limit it, otherwise we'd have an infinite number of solutions. So just a quick sketch, what does this look like? If we go our period, 2 pi, pi, our amplitude is going to be 3. And our period back to where I was before, is going to be 2 pi divided by 2, because that's our b value, so it's every pi we will repeat. So if we graph this at 0 pi and 2 pi, we have our maximums. So that means that pi halves and 3 pi halves, we will have our minimums and our zeros halfway in between those. So just getting a quick idea of what this graph will look like. And then what are we trying to solve for? Well we want to know when does this equal the y value of negative 2. So a sketch will help you to identify possible solutions. How many of them are we going to have? 1, 2, 3, and 4 on this interval. And we're going to be using decimal approximations as we go about this. Now, how do we do the actual solving? If we have 3 cosine of 2t equals negative 2, as we go through and solve this, we have to follow our order of operations. Sine, cosine, and tangent functions fall under the same category as exponents in our order of operations. So first thing we're going to do is get rid of the multiplication in front. So we have the cosine of 2t equals a negative 2 thirds. Next, we have to take the arc cosine of both sides. So 2t 
is approximately equal to the arc cosine, which is marked as cosine to the negative one power, of a negative two thirds. As we solve this down, that means that 2t is going to be approximately equal to to the value of 2.3. Dividing by 2, we have t is approximately equal to a 1 and 15 hundredths. So that gives us our first intersection located right here. We will have another one because our period is pi, one pi away from that. So if we add pi to that value, we will have another intersection at the value of approximately 4.29. So that takes care of intersections 1 and 3. Now we need to find 2 and 4. In order to find 2, we're going to use the symmetry that exists in the graph. We can see that the graph is symmetrical about this vertical line at pi halves. So if I find the distance from pi halves to my first intersection, so if I take pi halves and subtract my first intersection, that gives me a value of approximately 42 hundredths. Now if I add that 42 hundredths to pi halves, I get a value that will give me my third second intersection point, which is approximately 1 and 99 hundredths. Then, again, it repeats every pi. So if I add pi to that 1 and 99 hundredths, I will come up with my fourth intersection point at approximately 5 and 13 hundredths. Now this process has been what we can do to find solutions manually, a little bit of calculator help for the computation portions, but we can also use the trace and intersect feature of our calculator. So on the next function, if I were to take it and do a quick sketch, my period here is going to be 2 pi because I do not have a b value. and I'm going to have an amplitude of 2. I'm going to start on the bottom side of it. So I will go from minimum 0, max 0, min in a fashion similar to this. And then my other line will be at 1 and 2 tenths. I can see I'm looking for just two solutions. So if I go through and use the trace feature of my calculator, I come up with solutions at values of 2 and 21 hundredths, and also at approximately 4 and 7 hundredths. So we can do it by hand, it's a little bit more cumbersome, or we can use the calculate and intersect features of our calculators to speed up that process. It is important to know how to do both just in case you don't have a calculator handy. So new items here with cosine function adding in the solving of equations involving these. Make sure you have this down. Next up we're going to learn the tangent function.